Good day everyone, I'm Angeline Magabo from the STM 2A. So we are going to talk about the volleyball. In this topic, we will able to learn about skills, players, formation, and how to train a volleyball. So before all the things, let's talk about our first topic is all about the definition of volleyball. So what is volleyball? In 1885, William Morgan created the game of volleyball which at that time called Minto Net, he borrowed the net from tennis and raised it 6 feet 6 inches above the floor, just above the average man's head. So here's the basic information about volleyball. Volleyball is played by two teams of six players on a court divided by a net. The object of the game is to send the ball over the net so that the opposing team cannot return the ball or prevent it from hitting the ground in their court. And then, each team has three hits to attempt to return the ball. The ball is put in play by a serve that is hit by the server over the net to the opponent. A game is played to 21 points or some other upon numbers. So our next topic is all about skills. A competitive team master seeks basic skills which are crucial for the performance of players in a game. And those are serving, passing, setting, spiking, blocking, and digging. Each of these skills comprises a number of specific techniques that have been introduced over the years and are now considered standard practice in high-level volleyball. So now, here's the first basic skills, serving. A player stands behind the inline and serves the ball in an attempt to drive it into the opponent's court. A serve is called an ace when the ball lands directly into the court or travels outside the court after being touched by an opponent. In serving a player in volleyball, the serve is the act of putting the ball in play by a player's sound simple. But actually, it describes one of the most important play in the game of volleyball. So now here's the types of serving. The first is the underhand. Underhand is a type of serve in which the play hold the ball in one hand, swings the other in an arc motion below the waist and strikes the ball from the bottom with a piece to put in play. In an other hand serve, the player does not toast the ball up in the air as in other serve attempts. So next is sky ball serve. Sky ball serve is a specific type of underhand serve occasionally used in beach volleyball where the ball is hit so high it comes down almost in straight line. So next is top speed. Top spin is an overhand serve where the player tosses the ball high and hits it with a wristband giving it top spin which causes it to drop faster than it would otherwise and help maintain a straight flight path. So next is float. Float is an overhand serve where the ball is hit with no spin so that its path becomes unpredictable naka ball in baseball. Next is jump serve. Jump serve is an overhand serve where the ball is the first toss high in the air. Then the player makes a time approach and jump to make contact with the ball, hitting it with much pace and top speed. This is the most popular serve among college and professional teams. So the last is jump float. Jump float is an overhand serve where the ball is toss high enough that the player may jump before hitting it similarly to standing float serve. The ball is too slower than a top spin jump serve, but contact is still made while in the air. This serve is becoming more popular among college and professional players because it has a certain unpredictability in its flight pattern. So now, our next topic is all about setting. Setting it is usually the second contact that a team makes with the ball. The main goal of setting is to put the ball in the air in such a way that it can be driven by an attack into opponent's skirt. The setter coordinates the offensive movements of a team. Overhand and bump set. A bump set is made with the player's forearms. 
a player can also see the ball over the net on the first, second, or third contact with the same motion. Dump when the setter tries to play it directly onto the opponent's skirt. Since the firmer allows for more control over the speed and direction of the ball, the bump is used only when the ball is so low it cannot be proper handled with fingertips or in beach volleyball where rules regulating overhand setting are more stringent. Setting is the second step of passing and it can be done to either dump the ball over into an undefeated spot or to set the ball into a position that allows the hitter to spike it over. So now our next topic is all about passing. Passing, also called reception, is usually the first contact. The passing is the attempt by a team to proper handle the opponent serve or any form of attack. The main goal of passing is to prevent the ball from touching the court and also making it the reach position where the setter is standing quickly and precisely. The skills of passing involves fundamentally two specific techniques. The first is underarm pass. Underarm pass where the ball touches the inside part of the joint forearms or platform at waistline. The second one is overhand pass. Overhand pass is where it is handled with the fingertips like a set above the head. Either are acceptable in professional and beach volleyball, however, there are much tighter regulation on the overhand pass in beach volleyball. Passing is always done on the fingers using two hands. The higher the ball is pushed into the air, the more time a teammate has to react and guide the ball to specific place. So now our next topic is all about spiking. Spiking. Spike is usually the third contact. The object of attacking is to handle the ball so that it lands the opponent's court and cannot be defended. Ideally, the contact with the ball is made at the apex of the hitter's jump. The hitter uses arm swing, his snap, and a rapid forward contraction of the entire body to the drive ball. A bounce, a kill. A bounce is a slang term for a very hand, hard loud spike and follows an almost straight trajectory slipply downward into the opponent's courts and bounces very high into the air. A kill is the slang term for an attack that is not returned by the other team that's resulting in the point. An spiking is an any ball that is sent over the net to the opponent. An attack is an offensive action of hitting the ball, attempting to terminate the play by hitting the ball to the floor on the opponent's side of the opponent's blocker. Spiking techniques Backcourt or backrow pipe attack an attack performed by a back row player, the player must jump from behind the 3 meter line before making contact with the ball but may line, land in the front of 3 meter line. Then line and cross court shot. It refers to whether the ball flies in a straight trajectory parallel to the sidelines or crosses through the court in an angle. A cross court shot with a very pronounced angle resulting in the ball landing near the 3 meter line is called a cut shot. Cut shot is a very sharp up speed angle hit. Ideally, the ball is meant to the land on your opponent's sideline opposite of where you hit about 2-3 to three feet off the net. On the right side, hitters follow through on the, on the contact with a pinky down. Pinky down on the left, it's opposite with the thumb down. And next is dip, dink, tip, cheat, dump. Is the player does not try to make a hit but touches the ball lightly so that it lands on an area of the opponent's court that is not being covered by the defense. And the other one is tool wipe block abuse. Is the player does not try to make a hard spike but hits the ball so that it touches the opponent's block and then bounces off court. Other one is up speed hit. Is the player does not hit the ball hard reducing its speeds and thus confusing the opponent's defense. And the other one is quick hit one, an attack usually by the middle blocker where the approach and jump begin before the setter contacts the ball. The set called a quick set is applied only slightly above the net and the ball is struck by the hitter almost immediately after leaving the setter's hand. Quick attacks are often effective because they isolate the middle blocker to the be the only blocker on the hit. Other one is slide. It's a variation of the quick hit that uses a low back seat 
the middle hitter steep steps around the setter and hits from behind him or her. Um, other one is double quick hit stock tandem. It's a variation of quick hit where two hitters, one in the front and one behind the setter, are bought in front of the setting jump to perform a quick hit at the same time. It can be used to deceive opposite blockers and free a fourth hitter attacking from back court, maybe without block at all. Spiking. It is a form of attacking and very popular offensive more used in volleyball. It is act of jumping and hitting the ball down into the opponents of a court. And the other one is blocking. Blocking refers to the action taken by players standing at the net stop or alter an opening's attack. The jump should be timed so as to so intercept the ball's trajectory prior to its crossing over the net. A roof offensive block, a soft defensive block, single or solo, double or triple block. Single block has one defender who jumps, while there are two and three defenders for double block and triple block respectively. The block position influences the positions where other defenders place themselves while opponent hitters are spiking. Blocking. It is a skill in body ball used to prevent the opponent from the successful attack hit. A block technique used to deflect the ball coming from an attacker. Digging. Digging is the ability to prevent the ball from touching one's court after spike or attack, particularly a ball that is nearly touching the ground. This is skill similar to passing or bumping arms. Dive Pancake The dive is show his or her body in the air with a forward movement is an attempt to save the ball and land on his or her chest. The pancake is frequently used in indoor volleyball, but it rarely eat if ever, if ever in beach volleyball because the even and infirm nature of the sand court limits the chances that the ball will make a good clean contact with the hand. Overhand digging and bump are also used to distinguish between defensive actions taken with fingertips or with joint arms. It varies from passing, however, it is the much more reflex-based skill, especially at the higher levels, it's especially... It's especially important while digging for players to stay on the toes. Several players choose to employ the split step to make sure they're ready to move in any direction. Digging. A dig is a pass of hard ribbon ball from the other team like a pass. Your arm position and platform remain the same. The difference is that the ball is coming from a high point above the net. Our next topic is all about players. There are six positions on a volleyball court, and each position serves a unique role in the success of the team. Just like other competitive teams, you need to depend on each other player to not only do their job, but do their job well. Volleyball is extremely fast-paced and requires serious athletic ability. Depending on your skill set, and which aspect of the game you excel in the most. You can determine which of the six positions you will play. Setter The setter is the main contributor to the offense of the volleyball team. One of the requirements of the setter is having a delicate touch to set the ball perfectly for one of the attacking players. Communication is extremely important for the setter because they need to get the rest of the players on the same page. Without the setter, there wouldn't be hard spikes or technical ball movement. Next is outside heater. The outside heater is also known as the left side heater and is the lead attacker in the offensive strategy. To be a successful outsider, heater you must be able to jump high, be quick on your feet, and be ready to adapt to different situations. The volleyball won't always be placed where the outsider hitter would like, so they need to be prepared for hits from a variety of places. 
The third one is opposite heater, also known as the right side heater. These players need to be a perfect balance of both offense and defense. They will also get many opportunities to hit the ball ball. So similar to the outside heater, jumping ability is a bit is a vital. The main difference that sets the opposite heater apart is their defensive responsibility being able to receive the serve from the opposite team is just one of the many requirements of this specialized position. Middle blocker. The middle blocker is sometimes known as the middle heater. It is the tallest player on the volleyball team. Their main role for the team is being the first line of defense against the opposing team's hits. The middle blocker needs to lead the other team's attacker to quickly raise his or her arms above the net in a blocking attempt. However, this is not a defense-only position. The middle blocker will have chances for quick points throughout the set. Next is libero. The libero can become confusing for non-volleyball players. They can only play on the back row of the court and because of this are the ideal person to receive a hit from the opposite team. There are set rules the libero needs to follow such as not attacking the ball at the net, playing a set for an attacker from the front and more. You can always tell a libero apart from the rest of the team because they were a different color jersey. The last one is defensive specialist. The thing that sets the defensive specialist apart from other valuable positions is their ability to substitute out any player on the court. This will count against the team's total of 12 substitutions. The defensive specialist traditionally focuses on ball control and passing and works well with the libero. The formation as 4-2-6-2 and 5-1 refers to the number of hitters and setters respectively. For example, 4-2 is a basic formation used only in beginners while the 5-1 is by far the most common formation in high-level play. For hitters and two setters, the setters usually set from the middle, front or right front position. The team will therefore have two for attackers at all times. For example, one of the offenses used by power team is wall for two offense. While the second one example of four players are spikers and two will be setters. The setters are position opposite each or other so that one will always be on front now. Formation. 6-2 the 6-2 formation is a 4-2 system, but the back row setter penetrate to set the advantage of 6-2 is that there are always 3 to row, front row and hitter available maximizing off offensive possibilities. 5-1, the 5-1 is formal has only one player who assumes settings, responsibility regardless of his or her position and rotation. The player opposite the setter Setter in the 5-1 rotation is called the opposite behavior. 5-1's offense is actually mixed on 6-2 and 4-2 when the setter is in the front row and offense look like a 4-2 when the setter is in the back row and offense like 6-2. What is the difference between 5-2 and 6-1 volleyball? The two the most common offenses in volleyball are the 5-1 and 6-2 that 5-1 has one setter playing all six rotation along with five attackers. Two outside hitters, the, the middle blockers, and the one opposite. The 6 2 has two setters and six attackers, two outside hitters, two middle blocker. The strength and power making muscles stronger. Players need power in their legs to get high in the air end and strength in their upper body to spike, block, and dig balls, lifting weights. Simulates muscle fibers to grow, which allows athletes to produce more force and faster rate. Those as players get stronger, their explosive power also also heightens on the court. Stretching volleyball specific muscles ensure that athletes are able to reach their maximum performance potential. For example, 
core strength is vital for a player's stability and allow and allows hitters to transition power more, especially from their lower body to their upper body and arm swing. Quickness, making muscle faster. Volleyball players need the ability to accelerate in all directions. To achieve quick lateral forward, backward, and vertical movements, and vertical movements, speed and kick feel how players immediately react to whatever direction the ball is hit, prevent preventing it from touching the floor. Uh, the quickness of most often we are referring is to ability to rapidly change directions, but quickness is not about the ability to move arms and legs rapidly. It's more about a number of athletes, athletic qualities such as reaction. Speed, strength, stability, mobility, and power. Stability is stronger. Specific muscles ensure that athletes are able to reach their maximum performance potential. For example, core strength is vital for a player's stability and allows hitters to transition power more efficiently from their lower body to their upper body and arm strength. Power pull. Hitting the ball with power pull is important to any volleyball player's game. Power pull hits are challenging for your opponent to return, so it is an important skill to practice. For example, to control the game with a true overhand valuable serve, face your target, Visualize yourself serving, toast the same way every time, and serve like this fight. Agility is the ability to move and change the direction and position of the body quickly and effectively while under control. It requires quick reflexes, coordination, balance, speed, and correct response to changing situations. When you are when you are agile, it means you are moving to the best position to the next action, such as catching ball or tackle. Agility ensures that your body and sports equipment are in the right position to the next action effectively. Flexibility. Flexibility is the ability of joint or series of joints to move through an unrestricted, pain-free range of motion. Although flexibility varies widely from person to person, minimum range are necessary of for maintaining joint and total body health. Many variables affect the loss of normal joint flexibility, including injury inactivity or lack of stretching. Flexibility is an important component of physical fitness as many positive effects on the body. For instance, it improves mobility, posture, muscle, coordination, reduces of the risk of injuries and muscle soreness. It even leads to better overall shape. It mainly increases your range of motion. It makes it easier for you to perform certain exercises. Conditioning and exercise physical. Conditioning refers to the development of physical fitness through the adaptation of the body and its various systems and exercise program. Body conditioning exercises target your whole body using lots of different muscles to strengthen shape and tone your body. They may combine several types of exercises such as flexibility, strength and resistance training. Body conditioning improves endurance, increase, increase flexibility, and establishes a balanced, stable physique. These values exercise offer a wealth of positive benefits to your overall health and fitness level.